in the era of machine learning and deep learning dimensionality reduction classification filtering and regression play a very important role in feature selection and extraction now we have a number of algorithms that can perform these functions but what if we have just one single algorithm that can perform all of these together this is Shantani from Edureka and in today's session we will learn about such an algorithm known as the restricted Boltzmann machines algorithm and we will see how do they actually work. So let's move on and have a look at today's agenda. So first we will begin with a short history about restricted Boltzmann machines. Then we will move on and have a look at the difference between auto encoders and RBMs. Next up we will see what are restricted Boltzmann machines and how do they actually work. In the next section, we will see one energy based model and probabilistic model of RBM. Moving on, we will have a look at the training of restricted Boltzmann machines. In the final section, we will see one example of restricted Boltzmann machine using collaborative filtering. So let's begin the session. Now restricted Boltzmann machine is an undirected graphical model that plays a major role in deep learning framework nowadays. Now it was introduced as harmonium initially and it gained big popularity in recent years in the context of the Netflix price where RBMs achieved state of the art performance in collaborative filtering and have beaten most of the competition. Many hidden layers can be learned efficiently by composing restricted Boltzmann machines using the feature activations of one as the training data for the next. These are basically the neural networks that belong to so called energy based models. And it is an algorithm which is used for dimensionality reduction, classification, regression, collaborative filtering, feature learning, and topic modeling. Now let's see how are autoencoders and RBMs different from each other. So autoencoders are a simple three-layer neural networks where output units are directly connected back to input units. Typically, number of hidden units is much less than number of visible ones. RBM also shares a similar idea but it uses stochastic approach instead of deterministic it uses stochastic units with particular distribution now you will notice that rbms have two biases this is one aspect that distinguishes them from other autoencoders now the hidden bias helps the rbm provide the activations on the forward pass while the visible layers biases help the rbm learn the reconstructions on the backward pass restricted boltzmann machines are shallow they basically have two layer neural nets that constitute the building blocks of deep belief networks. Now the first layer of the RBM is called the visible or input layer and the second is the hidden layer. Each circle here represents a neuron like unit called a node and nodes are simply where calculations take place. Now the nodes are connected to each other across layers but no two nodes of the same layer are linked which means that there is no intra layer communication. Now this is the restriction in a restricted Boltzmann machine. Each node is a locus of computation that processes input and begins by making stochastic decisions about whether to transmit the input or not. Now each visible node takes a low level feature from an item in the data set to be learned. For example, from a data set of grayscale images, each visible node would receive one pixel value for each pixel in one image. Now let's follow that single pixel value X through the two layer net at node one of the hidden layer X is multiplied by a weight and added to a so called bias. The result of those two operations is fed into an activation function which produces the nodes output or the strength of the signal passing through it given input X. Now let's look at how several inputs would combine at one hidden node. Each X is basically multiplied by a separate weight. The products are summed added to a bias and again the result is passed through an activation function to produce the nodes output. Now each hidden node receives the four inputs multiplied by their respective weights. The sum of those products is again added to a bias and the result is passed through the activation algorithm producing one output for each hidden node. Now in the reconstruction phase the activations of hidden layer become the input in a backward pass. Now they are multiplied by the same weights one per internode edge just as X was weight adjusted on the forward pass. The sum of those products is added to a visible layer bias at each visible node and the output of those operations is a reconstruction that is an approximation of the original input. 
Now, because the weights of the RBM are randomly initialized, the difference between the reconstructions and the original input is often large. Now, let's move on and have a look at the energy based model. Now, energy is a term that may not be associated with deep learning in the first place. Rather, energy is a quantitative property of physics. Yet some deep learning architectures use the idea of energy as a metric for measurement of the models quality. Now one purpose of deep learning models is to encode dependencies between variables. The capturing of dependencies happen through associating of a scalar energy to each configuration of the variables which serves as a measure of compatibility. Now a high energy means a bad compatibility. An energy based model always tries to minimize a predefined energy function. Now the energy function for the RBMs is defined using the following equation. We can see that the value of the energy function depends on the configurations of visible states, hidden states, weights and biases. The training of RBM consists in finding of parameters for given input values so that the energy reaches a minimum. Now let's have a look at the probabilistic model. RBMs are basically probabilistic. As opposed to assigning discrete values, the model assigns probabilities. Now at each point in time, the RBM is in a certain state. Now the state refers to the values of neurons in the visible and hidden layers V and H. Now the probability that a certain state of V and H can be observed is given by the following joint distribution. Here Z is called the partition function that is the summation over all possible pairs of visible and hidden vectors. Now this is the point where restricted Boltzmann machines meet physics for the second time. The joint distribution is known in physics as the Boltzmann distribution which gives the probability that a particle can be observed in the state with the energy E. As in physics, we assign a probability to observe a state of V and H that depends on the overall energy of the model. Unfortunately, it is very difficult to calculate the joint probability due to the huge number of possible combination of V and H in the partition function Z. Much easier is the calculation of the conditional probabilities of state H given the state V and conditional probabilities of state V given the state H which is represented using the following equation. Now the image data sets have unique probability distributions for their pixel values depending on the kind of images in the set. Pixel values are distributed differently depending on whether the data set includes MNIST's handwritten numerals or the headshots found in labeled faces in the wild. Now let's have a look at the training of restricted Boltzmann machines. Now the training of RBM differs from the training of a regular neural networks via stochastic gradient descent. Now the two main training steps include Gibbs sampling and contrastive divergence. Now the first part of the training is called Gibbs sampling. Given an input vector V, we are using the following equation for prediction of the hidden values H. Now knowing the hidden values, we use the next equation for prediction of new input values V. This process is repeated a number of times and after each iteration we obtain another input which is recreated from the original input value. Now the update of the weight matrix happens during the contrastive divergence step. Now both the vectors are used to calculate the activation probabilities for the hidden values. Now the difference between the outer products of those probabilities with input vectors results in the updated matrix which is represented using the following equation. Now using the updated matrix, the new weights can be calculated with gradient ascent, which is given by the next equation. Now let's have a look at the steps involved in the process of training to prediction in RBM. So the first step is to train the network on the data of all users. In the next step, take the training data of a specific user during the inference time. Now use this data to obtain the activations of hidden neurons in step three. In step four, use the hidden neuron values to get the activations of input neurons. Now finally, the new values of input neurons show the rating the user would give. So now that we have seen how a restricted Boltzmann machine works, so let's move on and have a look at the example of RBM using collaborative filtering. Now let's assume some people were asked to rate a set of movies on a scale of one to five stars. In classical factor analysis, each movie could be explained in terms of a set of latent factors. For example, movies like Harry Potter and Fast and the Furious might have strong associations with the latent factor of fantasy and action. 
On the other hand, users who like Toy Story and Wall E might have strong associations with latent pixel factor. Now, RBMs are used to analyze and find out these underlying hidden factors based on user preferences and corresponding collaborative movie tastes of all users. Now, let's consider the following example where a user likes Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter but does not like The Matrix, Fight Club, and Titanic. The Hobbit has not been seen yet, so it gets a minus one rating. Given these inputs, the Boltzmann machine may identify three hidden factors drama, fantasy, and science fiction, which correspond to the movie genres. Now, in this example, only the hidden neuron that represents the genre fantasy becomes activate. Given the movie ratings, the restricted Boltzmann machine recognized correctly that the user likes fantasy the most. Now, after the training phase, the goal is to predict a binary rating for the movies that had not been seen yet. Given the training data of a specific user, the network is able to identify the latent factors based on the user's preference. Now, the latent factors are represented by hidden neurons, so we can use all our previous equations and sample from Bernoulli distribution to find out which of the visible neurons will become active. Now, that's exactly how an RBM would help you identify which movie genre would the user prefer. So this was all about today's session. I hope you have got a clear idea about what are restricted Boltzmann machines and how do they actually work. Do let us know in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!